test, test, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so if we are wow. really a library that goes from inside services if to outside to services, to then we need to do something for the researcher. And our next speakers, the, the, uh, Sally and Saskia, will talk <laughs> about how we can provide services for the humanities. Uh, Sally Chambers is a secretary general of the um, DARIA. And Saskia Schelkens is the faculty librarian for arts and philosophy at Ghent University Library. Thank you, Patrick. Um, well, uh, Sally and I met uh, a few years ago, um, and as Patrick described, uh, Sally is working in the Center for Digital Humanities, while I am working in a, uh, or setting up a rather classic library for the moment. Um, and uh, the place where we found each other and where we got talking um, uh, was basically the place in between uh, what we like to call it, um, where we got talking about um, the theme of ELAC, um, where we, uh, the idea of uh, a library um, changing towards something outside of the con traditional concept of the library, um, working towards a place that uh, will be remain relevant uh, uh, for researchers. Um, these are some slides that I use uh, very often um, in discussions that I have with my own faculty of where uh, the library and the future library needs to go to, um, which is the image of the 19th century classic print library uh, where um, that dude over there um, was, uh, was very cool in the 19th century. Um, but I was quite shocked when I started uh, at Ghent University that the library looked like this uh, 100 years uh, later, um, where you really had a kind of uh, hybrid uh, constellation using the library. And I always use this slide to uh, shock uh, the people at the faculty. Um, but um, during uh, my uh, visits to ELAC and working with people like you, I realized that this image or the image of the future library doesn't cut it anymore. Um, and I'm quite surprised that one of the paradigms that um, haven't come up uh, or, or the, the, the uh, reference to Logan Dempsey hasn't come up earlier on this conference uh, because he, um, the theme of the inside out uh, library uh, was something that he referred to way back in uh, 2005 already, um, where uh, he used that image especially uh, to talk about the collection and the library collection. Um, while uh, a few months ago he took that old idea uh, up again and uh, talks about it on a much broader perspective, uh, almost using it as a kind of paradigm. Um, where he uh, opposed uh, some of the, uh, of the things that are going on in research libraries um, and put them in a, a, a kind of uh, evolution. And what interested us in, in that whole uh, idea is the, the idea of the inside out library uh, as an actor and not so much as a service, uh, but uh, much more dynamic uh, within research uh, and learning environments. And I think what Jane and Lucas have just said uh, is very important, mind the gap. I would fully iterate, reiterate what they've said. There is a gap between the researchers and libraries. And even like in the library world, we've had the trauma of digital libraries and changing from the print library. I think in academic research as well, digital scholarship, there is a, this particular author, Christine Borgman, who has written a lot about the subject, um, has said that academic scholarship is going through a sort of crisis as well. But there are a lot of opportunities when it comes to digital scholarship. So what is, what, what is it exactly? 
These are some of the quotes out of her book that I liked. It allowed scientists to do faster, better, or different research. Um, very much the, the spaghetti that uh, they've just pre um, presented just now. There's a lot more data, information, intensity, intensively out there. It's distributed. It's all over the place. But this also allows the opportunity for collaborative scholarship. And what we're really interested in, what Christine Borgman talks a lot about in her book, is the intersection between scholarly behavior and technology. And as Lucas and Jane have just demonstrated, um, this gap is very much there. And we need to look at what researchers do. What is their scholarly behavior? And how can we interact with the technology? So in, in our line of work, Saskia works in the Faculty of Arts and Humanities. Um, I work for a research infrastructure in the arts and humanities. We're focusing on particularly digital humanities scholarship. And that is uh, not easily defined. King's College uh, in London is one of the biggest faculties uh, of digital humanities. And they are exploring how they define uh, digital humanities is exploring the possibilities of computing for the arts and humanities. Um, they want to work with all types of research partners and build applications to implement those possibilities. So instead of it being just a conceptual idea in the sky, they want to actually make a pragmatic view and um, work together with these online possibilities. Um, University College uh, London also, they, their Digital Humanities Centre they want to be at the intersection, it's, it's this gap again, this uh, place in between uh, of digital technologies and humanities. And this is an infographic, uh, this was published in, in 2012, but it shows all the digital humanities centers that are over the world that are popping up. Uh, and she's done a lot of quantifying work um, regarding digital humanities. And finally, the center where I work, uh, the Göttingen Center for Digital Humanities, our definition is research, teaching, and development, again, at the intersection of computing and the various disciplines of the humanities. I think humanities is not a nice little comfortable homogenous thing that sits in a nice little box like, well, I'm gonna offend people, physics or chemistry. Um, but humanities is a broad spectrum from arts, from literature, from e-dance, all the way archeology, span music, it's a, a wide list discipline that we um, have to be able to support. Within the Daria network, there is a particular network um, called Nadima, and this network is looking at digital methods in arts and humanities. So what is digital scholarship for arts and humanities? They have various themes within their network. Space and time, so looking at GIS and other geographical um, ways and temporal ways of representing information that's closely linked to the visualization theme, linked data and ontologies, digital data, so similar to the research data that Jane was trying to get from, from the library, but large scale text, the Google Books initiatives like the one here in Ghent, all of this is a field of opportunity for humanities researchers and in the e and the that camp, sorry, that we just mentioned, uh, digital scholarly editions, so all this marked up TEI text is out there. All these are themes for digital humanists. I work for something called a research infrastructure, and everyone says, well, what is that? Um, going back to Christine Borgman's book, she says it's amorphous, we can't really describe what it is, which is very nice to be able to put on a website. <coughs> infrastructures, and I think this is where we need to understand humanities researchers and think like them. Infrastructures, they take away our money from our proper research, don't they? They, uh, they suck all away. Oh, infrastructure, we don't need that. So this was very interesting in the Cologne Center for e-humanities there. They looked at the controversies in digital humanities and one particular one is the idea of the research infrastructure. So big infrastructures or lightweight webs. And uh, Anderson and Blanca here were um, having to represent the big infrastructures like Daria, who I work for. And they said, 
actually the future of the humanities infrastructure is more like a humanity specific ecosystem so they soften the infrastructure a little bit that uh, uh, Joris van Sundert who works in um, the Dutch uh, in a Dutch um, research institution said that for him digital infrastructures are the dead end for humanities it really restricts them and all the innovation that could go into digital humanities, we don't need those infrastructures. So even working for a research infrastructure, we have to be careful and think, what does that mean? Just a little bit about it here. Um, Daria, the Arts and Humanities Research Infrastructure is part of a bigger umbrella organization called the European Strategy Forum for Research Infrastructure, so this lightweight web we're talking about. But this is all the way across the different um, disciplines. So arts and humanities fits into the top one, social sciences and humanities. And just trying to define what a research infrastructure might be. So the formal definition, we aim to enhance and support digitally enabled research and teaching across the humanities and arts. That's our formal mission. But what does that mean? could be more a connected network of tools, information, people, methodologies for investigating and exploring. It's an act more active thing. And one thing is it's for researchers, by researchers. But we got talking then and what we're missing here uh, basically is uh, a more active role that a library can play uh, here. And for example, uh, we organized the pre-conference here uh, which clearly or, or nicely shows uh, what the possibilities are if libraries can cooperate um, with researchers. Um, the, that camp here was the first in Belgium. We organized it together with the Center for Digital Humanities here in Ghent. Um, and there was a very intensive uh, day talk, uh, talking about uh, what libraries could do and more uh, what they want and what they need. Um, and I referred them to some of the reports that I didn't know um, <coughs> where we talked about um, the, the reports that, that have been uh, written. Uh, for example, there were a lot of historians uh, there um, and Ithaca uh, uh, wrote a very uh, interesting report uh, where they um, described um, the changing uh, support uh, that libraries can offer. Uh, and uh, what, we can, what we see right now, it has a, a, a very lively discussion uh, regarding um, the role that libraries can play within digital humanities, um, where uh, JISC uh, 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 issued a report uh, last year um, where they explored the, uh, the roles of the library supporting researchers um, and identifying uh, some of the roles that library can play that to my view don't seem that new um, at all um, but rather logical if uh, you think of it. Um, there is also a very nice bibliography that is uh, being uh, set up by Miriam Posner uh, where she talks about and, and uh, warns about the complexity of that relationship if you want to involve on a new way or a, a more dynamic way uh, with faculty, um, then that relationship needs to be mutual and uh, equitable. Um, and that's uh, uh, one of the last uh, things that happened. There was the Journal of Library Administration, the last uh, uh, number um, that, that, that uh, 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 talks about that relationship as well, where there, um, uh, a lot of researchers talked about um, the complexities and the conceptual model that we could use. Um, and one of the things that I'm particularly interested in is the development of uh, uh, labs within libraries and uh, where we uh, combine some of the services together with IT services within the library. I think this is a lovely quote and it was nice because uh, Norbert Lossau is the director of library services in Göttingen and I thought this was, this was just a personal quote that he, we were just chatting and he said 
The success of the library is not when the librarians clap, it's when the researchers clap. And I think that uh, is an interesting idea to uh, follow up. But he took it a bit further. He, in the Liber Quarterly Journal, he did an overview of research infrastructures in Europe and particularly looked at the role of light that libraries are currently pay playing in research infrastructures. And he identified that there is low engagement from libraries in research infrastructures at the moment. So he put his money where his mouth is a little bit and he worked on increasing engagement from libraries. So this is um, in Liber, there is a particular um, steering committee looking particularly at scholarly communication and research infrastructure. So I'll be interesting to see what comes out of this, this committee. Another project where we are trying to explore what the relationship between libraries and um, other cultural heritage institutions and researchers could be. This project uh, is called the Europeana Cloud um, Project. And there are, within the project, there are looking at cloud infrastructure for aggregation of content into Europeana. But the particular case study that is being used is um, how Europeana can be used for humanities and social, scientists, so social science researchers. So Daria is, has been asked to be involved in this as well as another infrastructure, SESTA, who looks after social sciences data run at the University of Gothenburg. Um, we like to call it Europeana Research Cloud, but it's really looking at developing tools and services on top of the content that is in the Europeana to try and establish a closer link. We want to have, not to have this gap between the content in Europeana uh, and the research communities. So at the kickoff meeting in, in March this year, yeah, it is this year, in March this year, one of the workshops that they held there, what are the five key barriers to humanities and social sciences using Europeana content? And the first, there'll be a series of expert forums where researchers from the humanities and social sciences will come together with uh, people from Europeana to explore how they can use it. So the first expert workshop will look at defining case studies and they'll say, in your field, there's humanists, there's historians, archeologists, social scientists, and also looking at digital methods. They'll say, okay, how do I use Europeana now? Do I use Europeana now? But they'll also look towards the future. How would I like to use the content in Europeana? So I'm, I'm quite interested to see what results come out of this project. This, I think, is bringing it back to the library again. And uh, Karen Calhoun, of may be many of you will know her from when she was uh, uh, leading the WorldCats um, at OCLC. She writ wrote a recently a um, article, and it's uh, available as open access in the D Scholarship at uh, the University of Pittsburgh. But she really called in this article called Supporting Digital Scholarship. Um, advocated for a fundamental rethinking of how research libraries um, support um, scholarship in the digital uh, area. She saw it as an essential, research libraries are essential contributors to this emergent, she calls it network level scholarly research infrastructure. So I think this is a very interesting article to look at. Just going back to the Journal of Library Administration, this is, um, Chris uh, Sula's um, representation of what I would like to say is a sort of ecology of the digital research. In there you can see research communities, the digital infrastructure, digital scholarship, but arts and humanities librarianship. For me, this is all part of the research ecosystem and libraries is, would be good to be inside the research infrastructure. We would like to end with some of the tweets that we saw yesterday. Uh, I <coughs> thought that Maciej would like um, to have his name mentioned at the ELA conference, although he couldn't be here as well. But he tweeted yesterday um, a very apt remark, I thought, um, when uh, Herbert was talking, um, where he uh, reacted very enthusiastically about the projects that the 
uh, Herbert talked about, uh, but he described it as librarianship outside of libraries, um, which sums up very much um, the reason and the passion why you are sitting here and we are standing here. Um, and Rose Me, um, that's uh, one of the uh, uh, tweets you, you said yesterday when uh, Beata started her presentation. Um, but we found it very <laughs> appropriate. Um, so basically, that's one of the things that we associate with and we invite you to uh, join us. So are there any questions? <laughs> are there two questions? <laughs> One question. Hi. Um, <laughs> do we need to mind the gap between digital humanities and non-digital humanities? That's a rather... Um, you could talk a whole afternoon uh, about if there is a gap um, and uh, what you interpret or what you think digital humanities is. Um, there's the uh, uh, difference between what they call digital humanities with uh, uh, capital letters and not uh, where the, some of the uh, people believe that digital humanities is a really new research field where others uh, uh, say it will be a natural evolving um, uh, process, yeah. I think um, it's a continuum. I mean, in, in the history report, it was very, the, the, the Ithaca report about supporting historians, it was very interesting. I mean, it looked at some historians that use the internet, the web, Twitter, Dropbox, Skype, to change the way they do things but their research methodology say, stays the same. And in Daria, we have traditional humanities projects that may have a bit of a, a digital element, so they may have some digital content that they're looking at right to the other end where they do sort of quantify using computational analysis to do it. And I think it's a whole spectrum. So that's digital humanities is a, a catch-all term to just focus in a bit on not digital scholarship, but I really think it's a whole spectrum from using email or collaborating, um, using slide share or whatever thing, to computational analysis. Yes, I also have a mind the gap question. Uh, so I, I have this uh, uh, overall impression of you talking about the infrastructure and uh, committees and articles and visions and maybe is it I was wondering, is this a kind of top-down theoretical approach? And are you, aren't you losing the connection to the day-to-day -day research experience? They're already building their own infrastructure? Well, that's exactly, I don't know. That's exactly why it's researchers by research. I mean, that was the criticism, let's put it criticism, that I was trying to address by calling it infrastructure. That, that, that really doesn't work. The number of people who I would even say are quite aggressive if you mention the word infrastructure, um, I would say. It, it's really, and uh, I've got another slide that I didn't use, it, and it, that's not quite the right way of doing it, a grassroots movement. I mean, e the that camp is really nice yeah. because it, it was researchers who were active researchers, there were librarians, there were developers. I, I it, it's really, it needs to be bottom up if you want to put it in management. That, that's the reason why we're in, uh, presenting it both. Uh, I consider myself very much somebody who works uh, and, and uh, uh, within a uh, rather difficult situation at the moment and, and developing something while Sally comes from the other end. So that's why we're presenting it together. Are there more questions? Yeah. Front row, isn't it? <laughs> I think the thing that puzzles me about digital humanities is, is why it exists as a sort of a, a discipline with its own degree courses and things, because it doesn't sort of occur to me that it's doing anything different to like what science has had to do in terms of absorbing, digi you know, the digital world into its discipline and social sciences. I just wondered if you had a view 
or what you thought about that and if you think there's something particular about humanities where it feels it justifies that you know that split really I, my, my personal opinion is that um, that's why it's on another set of slides but it's digital humanities as a capital D capital H as a separate discipline my personal feeling is this is just getting the money in you know it's really it's a PR marketing thing to get recognition um, in my own university, it really, we need to get a professorship, otherwise there's no standing within the institution if they don't have a professorship. The humanities department aren't ready to have a professorship, so it's a bit of PR. But in the end, it is, they don't say I'm a digital, histor a digital humanist, they say I'm a historian who does digital stuff. You know, it, it, it's really, the, the, for me, I think it's the basis, basic disciplines are still there. Okay, then let's thank again all the speakers of this morning. <laughs> and now you're, you're uh, ready for coffee and tea, so we are back at 11.